hello guys welcome to our uh, tutorial session we are from the electronics nepal it's our tutorial session on chatboard fpga so we already have some session uh, on chatboard uh, we have session on like unboxing chatboard fpga and we already have done getting started with the linux uh, linux uh, with uh, sd card which is uh, inserted uh, already in jerboard package so we can use that rest card for putting linux and in the third session we already have creating custom ip session however this session is uh, light uh, is actually live uh, between this linux session and creating custom ip session uh, due to lots of requests we are preparing this uh, tutorial session so this tutorial session uh, will uh, focus on this uh, uh, design flow so if you want to learn more about uh, Jerboard and its uh, tutorials uh, from Digitronic Staple, then you can visit this uh, website or you can watch our tutorials at c slash Digitronic Nepal. So, our uh, general design flow is here. So, we will uh, go to Vivar and create a project and selecting Jerboard, and uh, we will finally create a project and uh, we will. Uh, create a block design so after that we will uh, add the IPs like uh, Jing PS, XI, GPIO etc and we will validate the design after the IP integration completes then after we will create SDR adapter uh, from the uh, design uh, block so after that we will run the synthesis and we will do implementation uh, including uh, BT streams so after that uh, however the BT stream actually is not necessary in this uh, tutorial because uh, all the BT stream is uh, included on IPs which we are going to use so like AXIGP I already have BT stream uh, sorry uh, constant sorry I'm, I'm extremely sorry uh, I'm talking about constant so AXIGP IO uh, IPs already have a constant so we will generate a uh, BT stream finally after implementation then we will export it uh, including bit stream to stk and we will launch stk now the hardware design uh, part will be finished then after we will go to stk so we will need to create a new application project and select a default hello world template uh, even we can select uh, like empty application then we can insert our uh, program uh, c program like software for processing systems and uh, we will after that after then we will program FPGA with a bit stream and run application to processor so it will execute on processors uh, however our, uh, our bit stream will execute on programmable logic part of Jink 7000 so so let's start uh, with Vivado uh, we have Vivado uh, okay here yeah. so let's go to create project uh, this is our actually third session but uh, we already have third session on custom IP creation, so we will uh, uh, we'll take a project location as default, and we will uh, put the project name as uh, getting started. So click do not specify sources at this time. If we click the, this, then what happens? Let's see. Uh, if we don't, this will appear like uh, what type of source are you going to work in with, and do we have any IPs for uh, adding existing IP, and do we have any constraints? You can add a constraints right here. Then after we'll go to boards. So we already have jailboard in our Vivaro uh, 6.1. However, this airport is inserted in Vivaro design suite, I think after 15 point version. So, you, 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 you already might have, if you don't have, you can uh, get its poor files from Xilinx uh, University program or from Avinet or from Digiland. So, you can insert that poor files in Vivaro repository, boards repository, then it will appear at here. So, like Xibo uh, uh, is not previously at uh, this menu, so we have added Zybo ourselves uh, which profiles are available in Zyrix University program and other uh, digitals so uh, we will do next sorry I think I have to select Zybo so we will do next and we will 
and even uh, we can see the revision version of z board so here is revision of d so we also have revision d type of z board hardware so uh, it must be matched if you have different revision version of z board then you can select a different one or you can uh, uh, edit the constraint as your z board so go to finish uh, after this our simple project will be created then after we will go to create block design we will need to create a block design so let's uh, take a default name of design one so uh, after this uh, block design tab that opens we will add some ips uh, like uh, uh, ipx actually stands for intellectual property which is a design design built uh, is like a uh, module like a module which have inputs and outputs so so we don't need to care about what happens inside that uh, IP or block so we just need to interconnect those inputs and outputs so let's add IP uh, we can use shortcut keys uh, for IP addition so we are going to add Jing PS initially after that uh, we will add other course like AXIGPIO like uh, um, other uh, automation will be done Okay, let's uh, let's have a look on Jing PS. So this is Jing PS. We can also do run block automation. Uh, but uh, we are going to do AXI GPIO. We are going to add AXI GPIO. This is the uh, general program input output port, uh, which is uh, capable of uh, communicating in AXI 4 protocol. So AXI 4 version of bus protocol is adopted by this IP. So it can communicate with slave axi port with our master axi gp0 so this will be interconnected but uh, we can use run connection automation so it will connect uh, gp0 with saxi okay let's uh, click all and click ok and also it will uh, insert uh, like processing system reset and axi interconnect in this block design so those uh, blocks are necessary for our design so we can see here uh, this processing system reset it will generate peripheral reset signals as well as uh, master's reset signal like frequency signal it will take frequency signal and it will generate like uh, a reset as exactly reset signal which is given to as a xi clock this is reset signals created by processing system and another block is also here which is axi interconnect this axi interconnect stands for uh, our uh, uh, these blocks IPs are uh, actually works on AXI bus protocol AXI actually stands for advanced extensible interface which is from the sorry ARM this uh, ARM architecture has been licensed uh, to Xilinx by ARM IRM Inc so uh, this uh, interconnect uh, actually did this Jing uh, processing system works on AXI 3.0 uh, 3.0 bus protocol revision however our uh, slave device is working on axi4 so we need to uh, have some interconnection for uh, interconnecting this different uh, revision of same bus protocol axi3.0 axi4.0 okay uh, then after uh, we will do some uh, block automation uh, and we can do just okay we, we, are, we are not going to change anything on here so let's okay it will in block design uh, background in block design it will uh, create a DTR port in externals and fix IO in externals and some other ports after that we can also uh, do some uh, customizing from here and we can also use some tickle commands basic tickle commands which we have remember like the regenerate beauty layout so if we run this tickle it will regenerated means this is the regenerated layout uh, user interface however we have uh, done this we have this option so uh, another thing we are going to use uh, we are going to need to have some customization at axi gpio because we need to uh, we need to determine uh, the axi gpio so in this option we are going to change some uh, customization parameters of axi gpio uh, this uh, we need to we can, can set this is custom then we are going to change uh, this uh, sorry so what we can going to do is this we don't need to have these ports initially 
property so after you delete this code and you will change the customization property channel which, which gives like we can see here uh, initially we have one GPA channel and we also had two second GPA channels so we can add uh, two G so uh, we don't need to click this okay uh, just uh, GPA you have both channel have similar uh, with an uh, output value and try stack value so just let's click uh, on ok you can see the corresponding ticker commands for adding uh, that IP and we are going to add another GPIO these two are for button and switches and another will work for LEDs LEDs so let's add the GPIO and we are going to uh, change the these parameters so it's okay okay and what we are going to do is uh, we are going to do around connection automation uh, okay uh, let's uh, click on connection automation in this option we will going to uh, click on first of all gp0 works for switch and gp0 works for leads i think button switch and leads so this will work on different uh json programming and so this this is uh, this port of uh, access gpi0 uh, the first channel of gpi0 gpi works for button and second works for switch and the two works for leads okay uh, okay let's uh, okay hmm. the basic uh, uh, improv output uh, connection as we say and we are going to do some connection automation so yes x i clock of uh, gp1 it will be connected to jing ps we can also connect it manually but uh, while doing our own automation it will be more easy so uh, we can type uh, basic commands uh, we have to think what I did so far so regeneration has been completed so we can even save this design and after this we will do validation of design uh, okay uh, we need to run the validation if we have make mistakes some connection mistakes so uh, or like TRC mistakes so it will show some errors but uh, there is no error so it is validated successfully so after this we are going to do is uh, we need to have a, a sdl source of this block design so what we are going to do we are going to right click on this design design name you might have some different name uh, like we can see here i have design one and we are going to do create sdl wrapper which will wrap all the block diagrams or block uh, blocks building blocks into a uh, SGL source it will uh, do uh, by Bivardo so let Bivardo do the jobs so it will create a SGL above this is the SGL we can see here actually this is in Verilog so here are some uh, like uh, uh, in proper ports uh, declaration and it is uh, declared in direction whatever direction like in out or in or out this is specified in second section after that we need some wires like signals in vsdl uh, then we need to have some port mapping the, this, is, this is the process of port map actually port map is uh, uh, used in uh, vsdl however it is also uh, uh, used in uh, log so uh, we need to uh, we need to uh, run the synthesis it will take some time for uh, synthesizing the design because uh, this design is quite uh, uh, becoming some complex so it will take some time 
for uh, synthesizing the design so i will pause the video until the synthesize process completes so so we will back a few synthesis uh, okay our synthesis process is uh, completed so we can go to umbra synthesize design to see some uh, implementation constraint is there or not if there is no already updated a constant then we should update those constants manually so uh, i think uh, there already might have some updates on constant so let's look on constant uh, it will load the devices so we can see the uh, different properties after synthesis like we can set up the debug debug signal so if we need to check some mm, uh, connection some wires uh, if there, there is the actual signal flowing or not then we can put some debug signal in our design but we haven't have placed any debug signal so just we are here just for checking that uh, if the uh, constant of uh, GPIO is uh, placing well or not so I think there is already have placement of GPIO so we don't need to plan for GPIO so let's see also there if it leads you put into sorry and sometimes uh, there might have some errors on GPIO planning so uh, we don't need to have any uh, thing to change on this uh, IO ports plan so we are going to do, uh, run a presentation as well as generate system so we can also click generate system it will obviously call the previous steps to started after the implementation completes okay implementation process uh, also might take some minutes because uh, this is also a heavier process we can see the, the resource utilization in our log and we can also see the updates of uh, processes in typical console so after any process completes we can see the uh, different types of reports like synthesis report utilization reports like what type of how many uh, logic gears logic blocks have been used we can see it here like uh, after synthesis we can estimate uh, how much uh, LUTs can be uh, utilized in the design so how much is remained so this, this process uh, also determines the percentage of utilization so we can see it on here we can see it in clocks memory and different IO so we are not going to concentrate on those parts uh, we can just uh, I need to have some idea about what type of reports is generated like it is different types of reports we can see root design reports post implementation io plan reports how much resources we have used and sometimes uh, timing summary report uh, might be important because it determines the overall performance of system so it must be uh, carefully uh, reviewed uh, in the professional design so uh, currently we don't have uh, generated timing summary report so we will wait for some time uh, for completing the implementation steps then we will come back to uh, generate the distant steps so uh, here is just a start of phase 1 I think there are phase 10 1 to 10 for implementation uh, steps so we will wait for some time for implementation so let's wait uh, okay our system generation has been successfully completed so we will mm, to cancel so we are going to export the hardware uh, sorry export uh, the hardware including the stream we should export the uh, like uh, properties of zero board and hardware including the stream so after that we are going to launch from local directory it will also take some time for uh, opening the SDK where we are going to write because we already have completed the steps until this and we are going to create a application project and select a template and we are going to edit some 
uh, application project uh, by this uh, program so let's let's go to uh, okay we are going to insert this code on uh, on the counter of uh, uh, hello world template so let's go to sdk so here also error settings has not been imported due to some java error right here so however we will uh, review at that uh, section soon so let's uh, create a project name uh, So we will get uh, this project. Mm. We are almost at the end of this tutorial because after we uh, inserted our that uh, C program for our processor is skipped into our hello world template. So after that we will program our FPGA through Xilinx tools then after we will run the project uh, into the processor so it will execute the uh, project so this is the uh, last steps in this tutorial so uh, it will process is taking some time so let's wait some time okay our uh, project have some errors but uh, after that uh, steps we are going to do program fpg uh, it will show some messages so currently our bit stream from regard has not arrived it has to get you to some java errors i think uh, there are some file not found exception so we will correct it uh, so you need to just uh, program the fpg after this manner so after that program so our project uh, is uh, this is the our project getting started uh, but uh, we need to add our uh, that uh, source so, so we need to replace uh, our hello world application program into this so here is our program so the, the first six error files so in main function we have initialized gpios we have used switches buttons and leads so uh, to our in input and other are in output so uh, it will get the device id then after it will check the switch data button data then after uh, it will also obtain some information about which button has been pressed and it will, it will also uh, uh, blinks the 
light emitting diode slit so we need to copy all the placing this section so the power rate uh, we have updated to 115200 we will update this section here is the power rate for communication so this uh, 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 terminal can be get from window uh, sorry there is one I think where is that go to oh yeah and there might have some problem sorry if we click that terminal will open then we can connect the terminal with that power rate so so uh, let's go to serial when we identify our uh, serial port currently we don't have connected the FPGA so we have to connect the FPGA then place this and this and after that you can get okay uh, we don't have port if you have port then we uh, then after we run uh, run edge GDB sorry launch the hardware uh, then it will fill back the status of uh, which uh, buttons sorry which buttons have been placed in here so this is all in this session we will fix uh, these uh, issues we have some issues on SDK file importing so we will uh, fix these issues and uh, continue in another uh, tutorial session so uh, so thanks for watching guys so thanks